How's it going, people? Welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while. Um, another rumor roundup for you guys. It's, it's a bit of a force, to be honest. Um, it's the same name circulating around. But uh, before I get into it, go to my last video, the last video I uploaded before this one called Becoming a Manager. Um, it's my team, Untitled FC. Um, it's a project I've got going on. It's something I'm actually looking forward to in my own personal life as well. It's always something I wanted to get into, coaching and management. Um, and here it goes, you know what I mean? So I want everyone to go to that video and let me know things they like about it, things they want to see, things that could be improved. Because um, a lot of work went into that video, a lot of work has gone into the team so far. And I just want to know um, what angle we we can go down to please the fans, please the people that are going to be watching, please the, just please the general um, YouTube football fan base, because to be honest, it's obviously an area that it is growing, it's definitely growing, and I've got some good young players out there that I want to, to, to show off, I want them to earn professional contracts, you know what I mean, so hopefully that becomes a big thing for me, and um, hopefully you guys, yeah, you guys are part of building what's to come. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I've had, had a lot of comments, a lot of feedback already. Appreciate all of that. Um, but if you haven't already, obviously the traffic doesn't really go to them kind of videos. If you haven't already, go and have a look at it. Give me some honest feedback and um, let me know how it can be improved on and let me know what you want to see more of. And also the Instagram is um, at untitledf.c. So go and follow that as well. Um, there'll be regular uploads on there regular pictures videos um announcement promotions there'll be a lot going on on that instagram anyway i'm not going to make a twitter for it because i just don't feel it's necessary but yeah instagram untitled f dot c and also obviously my instagram turkish ldn my twitter turkish ldn go and follow those as well and um yeah keep on supporting people keep on supporting because this is why i'm trying to force this video for you guys today um like I said, it's similar names being um, recycled again. We're close to, we're close to, we're close to, always we're close to. A name I haven't covered in any of my videos is um, Danny Sebelos or Sebelof or whatever. I don't know yet. He's not an Arsenal player yet, so I don't need to know. But he's someone that stood out at the Euro Under-21 Championships. He's someone that, he was in the team of the tournament, I believe. Um, well, yeah, he was, he was. Because in the few games I've seen him, he was definitely doing bits, so... Um, team of the tournament won the competition and someone that's looking to prove themselves at the end of the day unlike I think Denis Suarez I think this loan signing would be um, good for us because it's someone that wants to get, go back to Real and um, start for them in order to do that he needs to have a good season at the next club he joins on loan if that's Arsenal then that's, that's good for us especially in the financial situation we seem to be in or what we're forced to be in, let me say, because it's not seemed to be. We've got more money than what's been touted. We've got a lot of money, I'm not going to lie. And we've got an owner that can invest money. Like I said in the previous video, FFP is judged on a three-year um, rolling period. So if we spend a lot this year and make it back by getting Champions League football and then competing in the Champions League the year after, then FFP has been um, obliged. It's, it's been taken care of. But no risk, no reward. That's that video. Go and check that out and you'll know a bit more what I'm talking about. <coughs> but I have to talk about it from the angle that it seems that we at Arsenal Football Club are coming from. And Sebelov is a good loan signing, in my opinion. He's young. I think he's, what, 22? He's, he's, he's shone in the under-21 championships, like I just said. And he wants to prove himself. So why not? Why not? Um, it's like... Obviously, we've been linked to Malcolm on loan. I haven't done a video on him either because I don't believe he was anywhere close to that or even maybe inquired about that. But with, with Sebelov, it, it looks like we have. So we'll see how it goes with him. Um, I've looked at his league stats. I, I did see him a few times this year. Um, didn't really take note of him. Obviously, it's a young guy coming into the Real team at a turbulent period for them, one of their worst seasons in recent in in all of real history to be honest with you so when you look at it i believe he he had the opportunities to stand out. i think he played about 37 38 games on in all competitions last season um 20 25 of those starting 
And he only got about three goals, two, three assists, which, in my opinion, um, obviously it contradicts what I was saying about he wants to prove himself because he obviously had an opportunity there. But also at the same time, being an Arsenal fan, I know how difficult it is for a player to perform in an underperforming team or in a team full of fucking mugs. Like, being an Arsenal fan, we know that. So potentially this move could freshen things up for him. It could take him out of the limelight at Real and give him an opportunity to to prove himself in. If you don't believe the La Liga is the best league in the world, then it has to be the Premier League. So the other the other top league in Europe. So um, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. If it's bringing in a wide man, we lack wide men right now. So he's someone that would hug the touchline, cut in, cut out. He's confident, confident on the ball. Got a good eye, good technique. That's one thing about him. That's probably the top attribute I see. A good technique. He's got good feet, quick feet. Um, gets out of tight situations well. Composure. Um, not too much in front of goal. I just mean on the ball in general. When he's faced with one, two um, people, he's got the composure to take them on or find the pass. And um, he looks he looks dangerous. He does look dangerous. And he's, and he's very direct, which is, again, I've mentioned that throughout the summer. It's something we need direct um, wide men because we lacked that so much last season. And even though Oba and Laka did have pretty good seasons, pretty good seasons, um, I believe there's more to come from them if we can get the better wide men involved. With better wide men involved, you, you get to take the attention away from the middle a bit. And even Ozil could start to excel because he's obviously in the middle behind Oba or Laka. And with no width, it's easy for teams to shut that down. So hopefully we bring in a couple of, well, we've got Reese Nelson back hug that right hand touch line, hug it, dip down there, get the cutbacks in, and that's what I expect from him, um, Arsenal man through and through. And if we can get Sebola and another another winger, dare I say Zaha, but I'll move on to him in a sec. Um not dare I say Zaha, I say Zaha, but yeah, I'll move on to him in a sec. But yeah, with Sebola, um I've said his name two, three different ways in this video. I don't know what the fuck his name is, but he does look he does look good. He looks good enough to come here and be an option on the wide, in the wide areas because of the lack of talent and quality and general wide men we have. We don't, we don't literally. Reese Nelson coming back is the only wide man we have. You could say Saka. Saka's a bit young. He's someone that I was impressed with last season. He was someone that I was impressed with against um, Bayern Munich. So, but again, he's a bit young. So I don't expect to see him. Um, in the first team picture too much this season um, but yeah like I mentioned just now Zaha apparently he's handed in a transfer request or asked to leave or something like that and then Hodgson's come out and said he doesn't know about it so surely if the players handed in a transfer request the manager would know about it so I don't know what's going on there and usually if a player hands in a transfer request it says so and so hands in transfer request this one is Zaha asked to leave or something like that so Again, it's all them sort of stories with Arsenal. It's like Arsenal set to make a bid. Zaha asked to leave. It's like Arsenal make the fucking bid. Zaha hand in the transfer request and maybe we things could get moving. Even though, like I've mentioned before, I believe there's much better options out there for the money. Much better options. It, it obviously falls to see like what what price we actually do um, give if we do eventually get him. Um, that would be interesting to see because anything over 50 mil for me is excessive. Um, I do see other wide men like Jengis in there. I've said Neres, I've said um, Ziek is not really a wide man like that. He's more a number 10, but he's someone that can run on the ball, someone that can cut in from wide areas. He's also available for cheaper. Lozano is available for cheaper. And obviously, we've been linked to Everton Soares as well, but with him. Um, He's an interesting little player. Had a good Copa America, uh, man of the match in the final. But again, it, it's the it's it's the physicality of the Premier League that I'd be worried with him about. He's not really the biggest. He's very technical, very skillful, very like pacey. But I just don't know with him. I just don't know. But yeah, Zaha. It is what it is with him. We'll see what happens. Um, but I wouldn't look too much into it yet. The, the fact that we've been linked to other wide men throughout this whole period. And when I say that, I mean from Carrasco, we've been linked to... We was linked to Ziyech. We've been linked to... 
uh, but white men we've been linked to. Brahimi, um, Frazier, like, come on, man. We've been linked to so many white men this year. Like, what is the actual plan? And we didn't make a Zaha bid until July the 1st. So if we were really interested in him, surely, because he did say he wants to leave at the end of last season, surely we would have put the bid in early and tried to wrap it up early. Instead, we wait, 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 and it gives our fans an opportunity to say, wait, um, he's at the African Cup of Nations. But at the end of the day, we had ample opportunity to bid before. We had ample opportunity to, to test the water beforehand. Leaving it late and doing all of this, um, oohing and ahhing about all these players that I'm about to talk about, it's just the same old shit, you know what I mean? Even if we get them, even if we get all four players that I talk about in this video, yes, it's, you could potentially say it's a good window, but in my opinion, they need to come in early. They need to be in pre-season. They need to be going on tour. They need to get accustomed to the playing style, to the manager, to the team. Instead, it looks like we're just going to make signings in the last, well, it's the last three weeks now, um, teams on tour till... July 25th or something like that, 20th, 25th. So any new signings would either have to fly out and buck them in America and do what they need to do there or they'd meet up with them here with two weeks to go, a week and a half to go before the league starts. And do you start players that have just come to the club like that? I personally would because I don't give a shit. But in general, I get, I get when people say you can't really start him, he's only been here a week, like let, let him train a bit, let him, okay, cool, whatever. And even with Tierney, it seems like he's still got an injury so he wouldn't come straight in anyway we've been oohing and ahhing about that but yeah that was that Sebelov covered Zaha covered um Saliba again yesterday or the day before it's, we've signed him apparently but I've heard that I've heard that every week for the last three four weeks that we've signed him we've signed him we've signed him all the in the nose we've signed him yeah man let's just sign him and then cool. Even with, like, is it welcome to Arsenal this year, Saliba? No, it's not really, because at the end of the day, like, it's welcome to Arsenal next summer. This this summer, okay, cool, welcome, nice, nice young signing. Let's, let's look at his progress throughout um, League One next year. It gives us someone to look into, some hope there in the defence. And, um, that's how I see Saliba, like, it's in the back of my mind right now. I expect us to get it done since we've been fucking toying around with it all summer I expect it to get done it's just I can't really get too excited about that yet one I don't know too much about him and I'm sure not a lot of like 99.8% of the Arsenal fan base probably hasn't seen more than five games of his let's be honest unless you've gone back to watch the 90 minutes games that he's played I think he played about 17 games last season then I'm not sure who's actually seen enough of him to say for sure, do you know what I mean? Obviously the scouting team and the coaching staff know him from previous and know him from other, other not just them, well, I hope it's not just them 17 games because it's, that's not enough to to be spending this much money on. Yes, he looks like he's got the correct physical attributes, but we've all seen defenders in the past have the physical attributes and just fail in the Premier League. So hopefully they've done more research than just them 17 games. But it gives us an opportunity this year to really see him. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look out for the Saint Etienne game. That's for sure, because I want to see what he's about. Obviously, they're gonna be on the back foot. Quite a lot of games next season. Um, then they're they're kind of a mid-table club in France, so up and down. So that puts us in good stead. We get to see him. We get to see him defending, and that that's that's the be all and end all at the end of the day. And obviously. He, he, like I said, his physical attributes do look good, do look good, but back on my mind for now. And finally, to wrap up on Tierney, again, like, what is going on? Do we want the guy or not? Like, do we want the guy? Do we want someone to come in for him? Like, I don't understand what is actually going on right now. I'll be honest with you. I'll actually be honest with you. Because the more we frap about, the more opportunity we're giving another team to think, hey, you know what, Tin is a good left back, you know, why don't we go in for him? That's that. Look at this Saliba, apparently Tottenham went in for him. Like, obviously, that's been dismissed now, but apparently they inquired and had a little chat about it. But that's what you leave, other, like, that's what you leave by freshing about with all these negotiations all the time. It's literally taken, like, when was the Tierney news broken? Probably like four weeks ago now, five, no, nah, five weeks ago now. 
we've been interested all summer, but five weeks ago, news was officially broken that um, we're interested or we made a, some sort of a bid or something. Zaha has been going on for five, no, not five weeks. I think Zaha was a bit after Tierney. Four weeks, whatever. Then you got, who else? Who else have I talked about today? So, well, Sebola has only come up recently. Apparently, he was interested. Or no, Tottenham were interested in him as well. And that was the main talk around him this summer. A loan move to Tottenham. But that hasn't materialised. We picked it up from there. And, yeah, it is what it is. So, like I said before, be excited. Nah, how, how can I be excited? Even if we sign all these players, the first four games of the season, they're going to be tough. <laughs> like, they're going to be tough. Burnley at home, cool, that one should be a three points. But Newcastle away, Liverpool away and Tottenham at home. It's going to be tough. So until them four fixtures are done, that's when I'll understand a bit more how our season will be shaped. If we don't make any of these signings, then we're fucked. If we do make two of these signings, then we're, we're not fucked. We're all right. We're all right. Just about. But, again, Kronke out because it's not like it's not good enough. Even if you get the names in and we are all right, the, the, the lack of preparation, the lack of organisation, the lack of planning, the lack of, the lack of everything else, even if you go out and spend 100 mil in the last three weeks, the lack of everything else is, has a part to play. Like, like that, we, we care, do you let us said, it's not just about spending money, it's a lot more than that with you, Stan, with you, Josh, with you, KSE, whatever. Do you get me? So, so yeah, people, let me know what you think about it in the comments. Um, let me know if this Danny Sebola guy is, is 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 good enough. I think he looks. I think he looks it, and with something to prove, um, I think it'd be a good addition. But who knows? At the end of the day, who knows? Um, I won't pay too much mind into it until until we see it's official. You know what I mean? Until we see it's official, like Martinelli, then um, just take it with a pinch of salt, man. Just take it with a pinch of salt, people. And yeah. Like I said at the beginning of the video, follow Untitled F.C on Instagram. Follow me, Turkish LDN, Instagram and Twitter. And I'll be back in a few days with a video unless some news pops up. And maybe even a live chat soon.